Welcome to Julie Mango TV. I'm Robin Bourne. Today, I'm going to be chatting with screenwriter Clinton Roach about his award-winning short film, Sweet Rind. The film follows Elise, who uses the unfinished basement of her father's church in Kingston, Jamaica, to hold scammer Algie captive. Her mission is to take justice into her own hands following Algie's brutal execution of her sister Pam and her family after she foiled his attempt to extort their father. Thank you for joining us this morning, Clinton. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. That's good. We're just going to jump straight into it. Okay. So we'll start off with the scamming. <laughs> for audiences that may not be familiar with scamming as an epidemic in Jamaica and for local and overseas victims, can you explain how it unfolds and why it's harmful for the country? Well, first of all, it's stealing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, taking out other people's property. So how it works, people, a person get a hold of a call list. Uh, it's called a call list, basically. And you call the unsuspecting person on the other line, create some sort of a relationship to extort money. Mm -hmm. So typically you tell them they've won some prizes or something and they should send uh, information, whether it be banking or money to claim the prices. I mean, we've seen it over and over. It's been around for quite some time. So we all know that you showed how brazen scammers can be um posting profits from the crimes on social media do scammers usually get caught um and do you know if that's an area of crime that jcf has sufficient resources to fight or is it kind of something that skates under the radar well some get caught some enter and exit uh it's actually an ongoing thing the u.s government is involved in, in tracking people the jcf they're also involved in tracking people. So it's an ongoing thing because uh, to some, it's easy money, right? Lots of money. So it's hard to get out of. But uh, I can say it's an ongoing thing, um, but uh, they're working on it. You know, okay. I, I've been here for a while, unfortunately. I asked because clearly there's a reason why Elise saw fit to take things into her own hands in the movie. Um, wondering maybe if that's an absence of things being done by authorities or if she's just that's just her thing could you explain that a little bit for me well things things are happening and they're mm -hmm. actually working but she believes in swift, in uh, swift justice right so rather than go through the uh, the elaborate process of uh tracking and allowing the jcf for example to apprehend these people mm -hmm. uh, it's uh it's about her, herself because she's actually lost a lot right so someone takes out your family you're going to be uh proactive in some sort of a resolution, right? So that's what mm -hmm. she does. So although we don't actually see Elise, who's played by Sharon O'Farrell, capture Algie, the scamming boss, who's played by Kadeem Wilson, we yes. know that she outsmarted him using some sort of maroon combat tactics. So the history yes. cutaways were a very significant part of this story, and they kind of tie the characters together. So why was having that history component important for you? The, the, the history lessons, you kind of want to put a perspective on who we are as a people, where we're coming from, right? Now, to some, it might be very easy to take things for granted and think we've always been this way, but there's a whole history that we need to be aware of, especially uh, the young uh, folks, right? Yeah, so it's basically, as I say, you, uh, you, you, teach, you teach and preach, or you beat and preach, or whatever they, uh, the, um, the saying goes. So you have to let them be aware of our legacy and our history, our strong legacy, right? Uh, in the movie, we, we brought up the, uh, the abeng, which is the horn she was blowing. Well, the abeng was used by Maroons, or slaves, right, as a way of communication. Now, the modern day abeng, as we uh, pointed out, is the uh, is a cell phone, which they're actually using to, uh, to deceive, which puts us back, right? It's not liberating. So that's one of the symbolism, or one of the symbols we actually use that in the movie. So it's, it's a historic lesson meant to, uh, to start lively discussions. And I hope at the end of it, we can come to some sort of a, a deeper understanding or they or everyone comes to a deeper understanding as to uh, what our legacy means. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Okay, so how many of the details of the Maroon stories that Elise recalls are actually based on fact? And how much research had to go into the story of a coup? Was that just created or was that actually based off of a real person? It was created. Okay. So, but, but it, the, the, okay, the particular character was created. However, the, uh, the practices happen, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so she, she, uh, basically alluded to the fact that he was, um, trying to gain favors, right? At the expense of the hard working slaves. So it's meant to, uh, to put some kind of contrast and to, to point out that there are people among us who, uh, <laughs> who want to keep us enslaved, so to speak. So while she, uh, and her fellow slaves try to be free, there are others working against that, right? That's mm-hmm. what people, if you're doing crime, like, like, for example, he's a blatant crime against the uh, society, you're basically holding us back. So a cool is synonymous with the people who are, so to speak, holding us back from our liberation, full liberation. Okay, that's actually interesting to note because it kind of connects to my next question, actually. So at times we kind of feel like Elise is just reacting out of her grief and her guilt and her outrage. She kind of even sounds like a sociopathic history teacher at times she's very proper and she's giving him these lessons um but she kind of also to me resembles or represents the citizens citizens of the country like she stands for something more right yes well she's well she like, like like everybody else uh she's angry right not only at the state well she just lost her family so that's grief you know, alone, but then she's angry about the state of the country and how people take things for granted. So while she's, um, okay, so she she goes to the line, that line, but she never steps over it, right? Mm So at this point, if she killed him or not, which I won't say, right? But her anger actually brought her to a particular point, but then she pulls back, right? For a particular reason. So she, she's angry and like, as, as I mentioned, we all are uh, very angry about this, about the state of the country, what's going on. But she didn't act like him and just assassinate him up front, right? So she has to uh, deliver the lesson. So he's made aware of what he's actually doing mm-hmm. or the points of his actions. Okay. Yeah. So is there any significance between the oranges and the apples? Because we see her blatantly <laughs> denying him the apples and only giving him the oranges. Is there some sort of hidden symbolism in there? Well, yeah, there, there, there are quite a few, but in a nutshell, the apple is a reward, right? So the orange, you see, she she had to feed him, mm-hmm. right? But, and it's mentioned in other places in the, in the expanded story, the significance of it. But by her feeding him the uh, wedged orange, it's not peeled, right? So, you know, if you eat, Oranges, which aren't peeled uh, with the skin on, you get burnt, right? Mm-hmm. So he's being nourished, right? He's getting his, uh, his starch, his, uh, his, 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 his liquid, and his, uh, but in the meantime, it's still burning him, right? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a, a bittersweet scenario. You won't die because you want, I'm a, you're not being starved, but at the same time, every time you nourish your body, you're, you're kind of getting a, a little pinch as to... Uh, you know, the discomfort. Yes, it's that <laughs> slow torture. Yes, exactly, exactly. So the apple for him was just a, it's, it's a reward. It's nice and sweet all around. So you don't deserve apple or apple. Mm-hmm. So throughout the story, Algie doesn't even really seem to feel any remorse, even in the face of death or the fear of losing his son and his girlfriend. He seems to be holding on to this invincibility that he feels that he got from his chain and his ring. So yes. I've actually seen quite a few films out of Jamaica in the last two years where there's the criminal elements connected with the Obia elements. Yes. So do you think Obia can ever lose its association with bad activities or is it just always kind of tied in with that criminality? It's always going to be there, I believe. I mean, it's, I think it's out loud, but it's always going to be there. So mm-hmm. it's a false sense of security, right? Uh, when you get deep into the uh, the culture, the psyche, 
they pull these people one on one. You realize a lot of times they're actually afraid, fra fragile souls hiding something. So they stand behind something to be bad, right? I'm bad because I have my quote unquote vocative or people around, right? Or something to protect me, right? So uh, in the face of all the, adver you know, the punishment, he was Mr. Bravo, Mr. Bad. But when, as you see, when something else happened, then he lost that kind of, uh, the protection went, so he was exposed. No, they are actually really believe it actually protects them. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. But some people swear by it that, you know, it protects them. And as long as I have my, uh, my ring on, I'm guarded up, right? Mm -hmm. I'm guarded up, but hey, it's a false sense of security. It doesn't really protect them. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is um, too deep of a question, but in the feature, do we get to see more of, I guess, the history and the practice of the Obi and how that connects to him or no? Um, we have an expanded scene, but it, 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 it's not um, much longer. The fact is it's a practice, right? But in the future, what are you going to see? He's actually a super, what we call a super villain. Narcissistic, and he's a super villain. In fact, what he did to her family was actually pale in comparison to what to who he is and what is history. Oh. Yeah, so it, it, <laughs> that's expanded. But you know, un unfortunately, he's actually a product of uh, things, right? Because at, at the heart of it, he's actually a very brilliant person. So he could be uh, an astronaut, he could be uh, the next great physicist or something, he's that brilliant. But things happened in the early part of his life and it made him so, the society, things around him kind of hardened him. Mm -hmm. Well, he's actually born with a uh, narcissistic person uh, personality, but when you add that uh, on top of hardships and, and uh, tribulations in his life, whatever, it kind of hardened him, right? Mm -hmm. So he's actually representative of a lot of what goes on. So our fear is that in the movie, people might actually end up liking him once yeah. you know the story. <laughs> and that's, anyway, well, I can't wait for that to come out. So it's going to be a clash of uh, the super egotistic villain, or egotistical villain, or what's the word? A narcissistic. Yeah. You have this uh, very bold, strong woman, right? Who uh, she sees the world as her play, as her playground, very bold, and she has no boundaries, no no limits on her. So it's a clash of both things. Now she also represents Jamaica, right? The society. If you look at the society right now, it's actually being held together by strong women. So she embodies all that. So there's a lot wrapped into her her character as well. So the. Costume design for Elsie throughout the whole film, it kind of changes, but it's reminiscent of the traditional folk costumes or like the quadrille dress with the style of her own dresses and like tie heads. How did you come to that choice for her character? Well, I have to give a big up to the uh, costume designer, Ava Maria Campbell. She is the one who designed the uh, outfits. So mm -hmm. basically, say I want her to be strong, bold, and represent uh, our history, our culture. And so she came up with the, with the designs. Okay. It's symbolic, you know, if you look at her, she, well, she changes at different points throughout the, uh, points throughout the film. First, she started out with the uh, kind of army fatigue. That's after she just captured him, right? Mm -hmm. She might change to a softer, uh, Ensemble when she's be more instructive, you know. So there are different points throughout it. She has different colors on it, which means different things. Okay, I remember there being a red, like a red. I don't want to say jumpsuit because it wasn't a jumpsuit. Kind of looks like an overalls, but it was a dress. Yeah, the red. Do you remember the scene that I'm talking about? I think I said that. I think so. The red kind of represented um, the, the strength. So there's a. Cap Militancy, right? She might, I think she may have changed to orange or something, which is a sophomore instructive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the red is, uh, that's when you go, you know, you're going for it, right? So it shows tremendous strength. And so the film kind of ramped up with her in that kind of like, okay, so this is the day. <laughs> when we meet our maker. So there are different mm -hmm. reasons why she has different colors on throughout the other uh, film. 
Okay, because she definitely did go in and out of, okay, she seemed kind of nurturing and teaching, but then also I would chop you up. Yes. <laughs> so she, she went through those different emotions. I actually really liked, I think, the last monologue in the short. Um, or no, the one that I really liked was when she had her monologue and he was trying to get his foot loose. I'm not going to give up yes. too much, but I think she was wearing red in that one also. Yes. And she had and, that, like, snap. Yeah, and in fact, if um, if you read up the line, she kind of went into, so the monologue wasn't a straight script. It was actually meant to, uh, how do I put it? There's a lot of things mentioned, and she, I'm not sure what the correct term is, but they weren't straight sentences and they were choppy for a reason. And yeah. she had reference to different things like uh, supposed to be our independence. She talked about a Christmas cake, right? Which is a real Christmas cake, but you know, we don't like cake as children we like cake and making the cake. But then we wake up to a, a harsh January, which is supposed to be cold mm -hmm. with a celebration in the street. So she's actually mixing three different stories in that whole thing. And then he tried to escape and she you know, sprung into action. Yeah. I really like that one because you could tell that like she was bringing up stuff that, or things yes. that were very specific to Jamaican culture and exactly. to the history that's still relevant now. So I like how yes. that connection came through in that scene. Yes. So we've, sorry, go ahead. No, no go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. So I was just going to say, uh, we've talked a little bit about this feature. <laughs> so Sweet La Sweet Rind has had a very, very, very successful fel festival run with almost 48 uh, nominations, uh, 14 wins, 14 mentions. I'm sorry, 14 um, honorable mention and one special mention. So it's that's good. Yes, tell us. <laughs> but it's doing very, very well. So I really have to ask, like, when are we seeing the feature? Well, it's in. The process right now, the mm -hmm. and all the background, you know, this this is a process, right? So the, the plan was to have it out by next year. Okay. So then I go into production and uh, post production. It takes a while. So uh, the aim is to have it out hopefully by the middle of summer next year with everything being done. Okay, we will definitely be looking for it because now that I know, and I know that it gets deeper in the character development, I'm very excited. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So meanwhile, you're working on this. Is there anything else that you're working on that you would like to share with us? Yeah, well, I have um, four scripts, uh, four things I'm working on. Uh, one other movie is called uh, Lilac Wine. Okay. That's based in New York. It's kind of a love action story. Uh, so there's Lilac Wine, and there's another one called My Father's House, which goes deeper into uh, politics, global politics, uh, how Jamaica fares into that. And that's also a very, very cool love story as well, and some drama and some thrill. It's kind of a drama thriller kind of uh, like, so I've got all those working. Mm -hmm. a, a short comedy called Two Doubles and a Patty. It's common between Trinidad and Jamaicans. So. <laughs> I actually love that. Because yes. growing up, people always told me that like Trinidad and Jamaican, Trinidadians and Jamaicans didn't get along. But I'm like, I love all my Trinidadian friends. I love yeah. rebels. I love roti. <laughs> no, it's all fun. It's, all, it's, all, it's a lighthearted fun. It's a very funny movie. So, I bought, you know, so they're in the background as well coming up. And another uh, kind of a sci-fi called uh, Pompey's Night. That's more of a, um, a fantasy uh, a movie. You have a lot that you're working on. Yes. So that means I'm definitely going to have to speak to you again. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it, so what, what I'm what we're doing here. We're creating a um, a legacy and building value over time. So our own library of uh, great films. So there's always things in the background cooking, right? Mm -hmm. I'm glad to see because we definitely need a lot more Jamaican filmmakers and writers and directors doing projects because I will say Sweet Rind of 
the ones that I've watched, I watched a lot of films for this film festival. Yes. It was a very good watch. Um, Appreciate it. No problem. So I definitely can't wait to see everything else that you have working on. No, I appreciate you guys having <laughs> us. No Look problem. To the festival. Yes, yes, me too. I guess on social media, it's at Sweet Ryan the Film on all the platforms. And mm -hmm. our website is jrstartingproductions.com. Do you want to plug your Instagrams or your personal social no, media? No, I, I, I'm, I'm social media shy. <laughs> It's a movie. Okay, no you can find us at, at Sweet Round the Film. Okay. And uh, Jared Sterling. Thanks again, Clinton, for giving us some insight into this amazing piece of work. And thank you for watching Julie Mango TV. Subscribe for more conversations with Caribbean filmmakers. I'm Robin Bourne. See you next time.